the dark side of Dubai and the United Arab Emirates. It promotes itself as a desert paradise and is set to become a mecca for Aussie travellers. But don't be deceived by the apparent tolerance of Western ways because fall foul of Sharia law and you're in a whole world of trouble. Just like Australian Alicia Garley jailed because she was raped. This special investigation from Ross Coulthard. Preparing for the big uh, flying kangaroo to, to land here in Dubai is, is unreal. I can't wait to see it out there. Soon, many more Australians will be visiting. It feels like things just grow up out of the desert overnight. So it's been amazing to see all the changes. But there's more Australians need to know about Dubai and the United Arab Emirates. Now with the Qantas deal, there are going to be more Australians who are going to be getting into trouble in the UAE. Sex outside marriage, holding hands, even kissing someone on the cheek can be enough to have you arrested. A kiss on the cheek and A you go to jail. A kiss on the cheek and you can go to jail. The worst horror stories are when women are raped and they go to the police to report the incident and they are then accused themselves of having sex outside marriage, charged with the crime and possibly imprisoned. Tonight, Alicia's story. You obviously hadn't expected to see her again, had you? You thought it was possible she might die. Absolutely, absolutely. And I couldn't do a thing about it. My darling girl. She looks so beautiful. The UAE government doesn't like the media investigating controversial stories like Alicia Ghali's. They actually require the press to have a special filming permit, which is why we're shooting this entire story here in secret. The UAE promotes itself as a desert paradise, welcoming to Westerners, where alcohol flows and a blind eye is turned to Western ways. 90 minutes from Dubai is Lumeridian Al Akar Beach Resort, owned by the giant American hotel chain Starwood. So Alicia, let's go back to 2008. Yes. You were hoping for an adventure. That was the plan, yeah. Alicia, who was 27, had been hired to be manager of the hotel's spa and beauty salon. I got offered a fantastic package, which seemed like a dream, tax-free income and all expenses paid, and I went over with hopes of it being fun and luxury. Set on the beach, no expense has been spared. Opulent rooms, restaurants, bars, a nightclub, a massive pool, even Aussie-style lifeguards. Alicia had her own room near the staff bar, where she says employees were encouraged to relax and enjoy alcoholic drinks. Were you excited as you left Australia and said goodbye to your family? Excited and nervous, but more excited. New adventure. Three months after arriving, at the end of a long day, Alicia was in her room when it began to flood. Water was coming up from the drain in the bathroom, so I called maintenance, they came, they cleared it out, and then I went back into my room and within another half an hour it was flooded again and a lot worse. The flooding was no accident. Later, maintenance would find a man's shirt and a plastic bag had been used to block Alicia's drain, forcing her to leave. They knew the only place for you to go and wait was the bar. Yes. It was about 11 o'clock at night. She left her room, went to the staff bar. She sat down, opened her laptop and ordered herself a bourbon and coke. Everything seemed perfectly normal. There was one person that I knew. He was in the life-saving department, so I was familiar with who he was. He brought a bucket of ice over to the table um, with tongs. He put ice in my drink. 
I remember drinking the drink. I don't even remember finishing the drink. Next thing I know, I wake up at 4.30 in the afternoon the next day. The door to my apartment was ajar. I was completely naked with just my bra hanging off my shoulder. I woke up in pain. Um, I had broken ribs and massive bruising to a lot of my body. You'd been raped? Yes. Her drink had been spiked. She'd been taken semi-conscious from the bar to her room. Later, there were reports of screams that hotel security was sent to her room where they found Alicia unconscious and three naked men, all employees. Starwood Hotels refused to answer our specific questions about this. There are two people who know what happened to Alicia Gali that night, and I've had to come all the way to the fjords of Norway to get their story. Egyptians Nasser and Nazmar worked at the hotel where they befriended Alicia. After the attack, she confided in them and showed them her injuries. She looked very upset. She's in shock. Uh, she's very tired. Uh, and she crying too much. When she came to our house, she saw Nazma, her body, and what happened. She looked very bad. Alicia went here in the hotel to a senior manager and told him that she wanted to report the rape to police. And she asked for help to go to the hospital for treatment. He said, if you go to the police, you could be in trouble because you had a drink. And so he sort of but made so, me a bit did, did he tell you at that stage that it was a criminal offence for you to drink alcohol? No, he just said that you might have some issues with the police. Did anybody from your employer say, Alicia, this country has crazy laws. We're going to get you out of the country and get you to good medical help overseas. Mm -hmm. This is our proposal. Mm -hmm. Was there anything like that? No, nothing like that at all. They didn't even talk about giving me my passport back or giving me an option to leave. I said, if I want to go home, how do I go home? And they said that I had a debt to them because they'd flown me over and... Um, You're kidding. Yeah, they'd flown me over and paid my accommodation and all that, and I hadn't worked long enough to You're recover kidding. those expenses. So you've been raped. Yes. You're asking for your passport so you can get medical assistance. Yes. And they're saying you owe them money. Yes. Badly injured and in shock, Alicia was made to feel as if she was to blame. When she tried to go to the human resource manager office, he refused to meet her. And did you witness that yourself? Yes, yes. Confused and frightened, Alicia rang the Australian consulate here in this high-rise in Dubai. She didn't know what to do. She needed help from the Australian government. She didn't get it. In legal documents, the woman Alicia spoke to at the consulate is identified as Gail Miller. All she said to me is reconsider your need to be in the country at this time and that if I had been drugged, there could be issues with drug laws in the country and that I could have faced life imprisonment. Um, and I explained to her that the hotel was holding my passport and that I couldn't go anywhere. Did she offer you an emergency passport to no. get you out of the country? No. No. She tried to get help, didn't she, from both the hotel? Yes. And the embassy? Yes. What do you think of the help she received? Alicia was neglected. Sue is Alicia's mum. Back in Australia, all she could do was try and comfort her daughter over the phone. She'd say, I don't know what to do. I was I don't know what to do. I couldn't help her. Alicia Gali was in a strange country with no one to turn to and no one knew of her plight. And that's because the Australian government was actively trying to suppress her story. They told her family not to speak to the media, not to make a fuss. At the same time, hotel management was applying its own pressure, warning her against going to hospital or the police. 
but the pain of her injuries became too much. I was in agony. I had four broken ribs on one four, side. Four broken four ribs? Four broken ribs. I went to the hotel and said, I'm going to have to go to the hospital. They, at that point, knew, said, well, the police will become involved. They became quite aggressive towards me. So the hotel didn't even help you to go to the hospital? No. I caught a taxi on my own. At this hospital, Alicia was examined. Her injuries consistent with being bashed and raped. They said, do you want to tell the police um, so that the men can be arrested? And I said, uh, the hotel told me that I might have some issues with the fact that I had a drink. And they said, no, don't worry about it. You're a Christian, you're not Muslim, it's fine. Um, report, report. What Alicia did. What Alicia didn't know is that uh, being raped um, was essentially the same as having sex outside marriage where the sex is consensual and that, um, that she would be charged with the same offence as those who assaulted and raped her. Michelle James is Alicia's Australian lawyer. It was Islamic Sharia law that would now determine Alicia's fate and the fate of the men who'd raped her. My understanding is that for um, there to be a conviction of rape in the UAE, that there need to be four adult male Muslim witnesses who can uh, provide evidence that the sex was non-consensual. You're kidding. That's my understanding. So a woman can only prove that she has been raped if there are four adult Muslim men watching the rape who are prepared to say that the sex was non-consensual. Alicia followed the hospital's advice and went to this police station to give a formal statement in the hope that the men who'd drugged and raped her would be arrested. Did you realise at that stage you were in trouble? No. I thought I was just sign signing my statement as to what had happened. Is that statement in English? No, it was in Arabic. I said, I can't sign this, it's not, not in English. And they basically gave me the impression I would be in trouble. He told me I'd be in trouble with the, the judge wouldn't like it if I didn't sign. What Alicia couldn't have known is that the statement was in fact a confession to sex outside marriage, to damaging honour, promoting sin and drinking alcohol. As soon as she'd signed, she was taken directly to an Islamic court. Then the three men who'd raped her, all hotel employees, were brought into the court, handcuffed. Alicia thought she was testifying against them, but she was actually on trial with them. You think that these men are facing criminal charges for yes, rape? Yes, yes. They you, came you in with shackles. You think you're just a witness? Yes. Nobody's told you that you're now under suspicion. Yes. As a criminal. That's right. But more importantly, why should any woman who's a victim of rape be accused of any crime? Yeah, I know. The trial lasted less than 30 minutes. I didn't realise until after I'd finished giving my statement and I was being led into a different direction the way that I'd came. And I said, where, where am I going? What's going on? And the judge said to me, you, you're going to jail. And I said, what for? And he said, you drank. And I said, but I drank in a staff bar and I'm Christian. And he said, doesn't matter, you don't have any rights here. You sure don't. Hmm. Alicia was sentenced to one year in jail, 11 months for sex outside marriage, one month for drinking alcohol. As for the rapists, two got the same sentence, the third got a month more. Two hours drive from Dubai is a place few tourists ever see. Fujera Prison. I was petrified when I first went in there. I was absolutely terrified. This is the prison here, a place Alicia Ghali describes as a nightmare. It's where she was locked up for eight months. During the day, Alicia could hear prisoners being lashed. At night, prisoners being bashed. In filthy conditions, she shared a cell with 30 other women, and she felt absolutely alone. It was disgusting, no hygiene whatsoever. Sometimes they'd turn the water off for four days at a time, and when it's 55 degrees in the middle of summer, it, it was bad. 
I was fearful she'd die. Alicia is not the only victim of an unjust system. You know you haven't done anything wrong, and then that moment he told me, you have to do a month in prison. It's shock, just absolute shock. In 2009, Charlotte Adams was sentenced to a month in jail for greeting a male friend with a kiss on the cheek. Charlotte was on an extended holiday. A real estate agent from England, she was thinking of finding work and staying permanently. The place felt fun and she fell for Dubai's party lifestyle. Monday nights you go out and it's ladies drink free, you get free champagne in every hotel bar. You have brunches once a week where it's unlimited alcohol and food for like £100. So it's very much a drinking, party and culture in Dubai. It's what traps many Westerners. A seemingly tolerant society that paints itself as free and easy. But it's not. Charlotte Adams was in this diner when she found out the hard way that this country is not the West. With four male friends, Charlotte came here for a late night snack after an evening out. Earlier, she'd given Eamon, a fellow Londoner, a friendly kiss on the cheek to say hello. They finished their meal, they paid and left, only to be stopped by the police. Were they arrested Taken. you? Yeah, there and then on the spot. What did they accuse you of? They didn't say anything at first. They didn't say anything. Um, we got driven to Jebel Ali police station and they called us in one by one. And then he was just asking me, like, what I'd been doing that evening. So I said, you know, we've just been out, like, got some food. He was like, were you kissing him? And I was like, no. And he's like, did you kiss him? And I was like, well, we would have kissed on the cheeks to say hi. But apparently, as soon as I said we kissed on the cheek, that was it. It was like, kissing on the cheek is illegal. Charlotte spent 23 days behind bars before being deported. It portrays itself as being really progressive and forward-thinking and the new Middle East, as they call it, but it's not. After serving eight months, Alicia Ghali was released early from prison as part of the celebrations in the UAE for the wedding of the Sheikh's son. Also pardoned that same day, the men who raped her. When you finally got that call, that she was coming home. This is where I cry. Because I'd had to keep everything um, hidden. It was beautiful. Tell me about that moment. She walks off the plane. My darling girl. She looks so beautiful. Since arriving home four years ago, Alicia has been unable to work. She suffers severe post-traumatic stress disorder, is on medication and now lives with her mum. She says Starwood Hotels, whose company motto is do the right thing, have offered... no ongoing support. They can't even help me to recover. I can't, I can't work, I can't afford my treatment and they won't even help me with my medical bills. Let me count the ways that Starwood, the world's second largest hotel group, the owner of the Sheraton and Western brands, assets of over $8 billion, has let Alicia Ghali down. They failed to warn her of the risks of reporting a rape in the UAE. They refused to return her passport, so she couldn't even leave the country. While she was in prison, they failed to pay her the full pay she was owed. And even today, they're still not helping her with her mounting medical bills. We went to their headquarters in Stamford in the United States, emailed, and phoned. It's Ross Coulthard here from Channel 7 Australia. Requesting an interview again and again. Oh, it's going through to voicemail. I'll leave a message. We wanted to speak to Fritz van Paschen, CEO of Starwood. 
He's the nine million dollar man. That's the sum of his salary package last year. And Starwood is a multi-billion dollar company. But no one in the company seems able to find it in their heart to pay Australian Alicia Garley's medical bills. What do you think the hotel chain hoped would happen? That it'd be swept under the carpet, not be, not be dealt with, just go away. It's very, very hard to see and understand what's, sorry, what's wrong? Oh, I'm sorry, crying. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, darling. <laughs> Do you want? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Are you crying? Yeah. Oh, darling. This is a photograph of a, a beautiful young woman. Mm. Who's that young woman? Me, before I went. What's changed? Um... I don't get joy out of the same things as I used to. I, ha I do have a greater appreciation for simple things like fresh air and walking on the beach and freedom, just being free, but I'm just not the same. I'm, I'm damaged now. Ross Coulthard with that investigation. Starwood refused an interview with Sunday Night. They sent a statement claiming they'd provided Alicia with medical and other assistance and that the safety and security of staff and guests was their paramount priority. The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade rejected Alicia's account and claimed they'd provided extensive assistance to her. However, they refused to answer any questions from Sunday Night. Both those statements are on our website. <laughs>